Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Cool Star Lab. Uh, this summer, you're going to be reducing all sorts of great spectral data. Uh, and the series of, this series of videos is meant to give you some instruction on how to do those reductions through our online remote computer, uh, splat.physics.ucsc.edu, using the specs tool IDL package. So we're going to unpackage that package today. Um, this video is mostly going to be talking about how to get things set up on your machine and your first login. And then the rest of the videos then will continue to show um, how to actually do the reductions themselves. So let's start by sharing my screen so you can see uh, what you will be seeing as you go uh, and do your reductions. Um, you can see what I'm at here is the uh, front page for accessing the Splat physics computer. And I should say everything that we're gonna talk about is also in the instructions which are on this website here um, that you'll get access to as well uh, on our information website. In any case, when you click on the link for guacamole, so splat.physics.ucsd.edu slash guacamole, you'll come up to this login page, and you should each have your own individual logins and passwords. Those of you who are UCSD students uh, or, or uh, even staff, uh, this will be your usual Active Directory password. So if I click into here, this is going to get me into the system that allows me to access the Splat computer. You can see there's a whole bunch of different uh, uh, sort of names here. Um, you want to choose your name, in this case, uh, Abergasser. And I'll come into another login screen where I'll just want to repeat my regular password that we've got for this machine. So that comes up, and I'm going to go ahead and type that in. It's a long one. There we go. And the first time you log in, you're going to see a screen like this. So just an empty kind of computer screen. This is running on a Unix system called CentOS 7. Um, and just to kind of familiarize yourself with some of the uh, applications you'll be using on this computer, um, they're actually all kind of linked over here on the side. Uh, the first thing you want to do is kind of familiarize yourself with the file system. And so that's just using the files command here. And it looks just like any kind of Windows or Apple's operating system. You've got a bunch of directories here. You can drill into those directories by, in this case, clicking on the arrows, for example. There's nothing in my music folder. Or you can choose along the side here. Now, before we get much further, um, we're going to create a few folders to start off with uh, that are going to be useful for the reduction and analysis stages of our research. Um, and so the folders we're going to create, and we can do that just right here in our home directory, um, create a folder. I'm going to call the first one IDL. This is going to contain our IDL scripts for reducing the data. IDL is a programming language, and the reduction code we're using is written in that language. I'm going to create another folder, which I'm going to call Python. And this is going to contain the Python codes we'll be using for particularly the analysis part of our, of our work. I'll create another one here called Reductions. That's going to contain all of the reduced spectra that we analyze. And another one that we're going to call analysis. We're just going to hold on to that one for when we do the spectral analysis a little bit later in the summer. And finally, two more. We're going to create a folder called spectra. And one more, oops, not new tab, sorry. Uh, one more folder called models. And again, when we get to the analysis part of our project, those are going to contain the spectra that we're working with and the models, if we're using models, we're working with as well. All right, so these are just a bunch of folders that we're going to sort of organize our analysis with. Now, another uh, useful tool to use here is up here. This is the terminal window. We're going to make use of a lot of this. Um, if you're not familiar with the uh, sort of terminal commands in the Unix environment, um, they're the same kind of commands we see in Mac computers. Windows has a slightly different language. In any case, this is how, as uh, sort of, you know, advanced programmers, we get access to actually controlling what the computer does. Don't worry, most of our commands will be pretty simple and used uh, repeatedly, and so you'll get used to them. Uh, but it's just good to have that open as you're doing your analysis. And as you're looking up information, of course, you also need a web browser, and that is provided up here in Firefox. If I click on that, that brings up a very familiar looking kind of web browser thing. Go ahead and close that so we have a little bit of space here. All right, so now that we've got some familiarity, at least with our desktop, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our programming environment. And um, every time you're working at the sort of programming language level or Unix level, 
um, we want to sort of set up a bunch of uh, essentially environmental variables that describe how the computer is going to work, where it's going to look for certain files, certain program files, and how it's going to execute those. Uh, and fortunately, we don't have to do too much for that because we've already set up a baseline um, com command for that. This is in a uh, operating uh, modality called bash. Um, if you want to learn more about bash or CSH or all these ways that commands are used in the shell script format, you can do some aside uh, research on that. For the case that we're talking about that, this is just going to describe what kind of uh, sort of baseline commands we want the computer to run. So it sets up all our environmental variables. Now to set that up, it's actually quite easy. Um, we're going to copy, and in Unix, copy command is cp. And then I'm going to copy from the directory slash data a file called dash bash rc. This is the command set that's going to tell us how to run a computer. So that's what I'm copying from. And I'm going to copy to this kind of funny symbol, tilde slash. This puts us in our home directory. So if I type that, and now if I type ls, which is list my files, um, actually I'm going to do ls staff f to show everything, you'll see that we have, um, oh, I actually don't see that here. So let's try that again. Let's see if I actually have it. Okay, I do. Okay, so this isn't showing up. So, um, so if I do more dot bash rc, I'm now in my home directory, more lists the contents in a text file. And these are the commands that we're talking about. And again, there's all sorts of kind of things here, but the key thing is the stuff that's down here where it's exporting these environmental variables. This tells uh, the computer where the splat package is going to reside. This tells us where the models and the specter reside. Notice that you created those folders just a little while ago. And this creates the directories that tell us where IDL should be finding its commands. All right. So there's nothing fancy about this. It's just telling the computer where to find certain files when we start to run them. And to execute those commands, all we need to do is just type the word bash on our terminal, and that will run those commands completely invisibly. Um, all right. So the next thing we want to do is get set up for using specs tool, which I mentioned was in the IDL language. Um, IDL is a programming language that's contained on this computer. But before we can use it, we need to actually move the software that's associated with this reduction package into our home directory. Now, fortunately, we set up this IDL directory. That's the directory. It's right there. This is where we're going to put it. And we can do this again in the terminal environment by typing the following command, right? So CD is change directory. That's going to put me in my home directory. And then I'm going to do another CP. And we're going to CP uh, the Python, the specs tool uh, program, which I'm going to go actually remember where it is. So going to my directions here, it's in data slash IDLcom. So do CP dash R, that's copy recursively. So it's going to copy the folders and everything in the folders slash data, slash IDL common, and specs tool. By the way, I'm typing this fast because I'm using the tab to kind of finish off the rest of the sentence, uh, which is a nice, nice trick. Um, and then I'm going to put this into home directory and then the IDL directory in there, right there. So if I type return on that, it does it pretty quickly. And if I now go to my fi file uh, structure here and I Put that tab. Now I have something in my IDL folder, and this is all of the specs tool uh, codes and data it needs for reduction. All right, so now that's totally in your directory, which is great. Now to see if that worked, next we're going to do uh, run IDL. Uh, and again, it's always useful to just do a quick bash every time you're going to do something in terminal that sets those environmental variables up. And to run the specs tool package, we first want to get into the IDL environment. That's just by typing IDL into our terminal. And you're going to notice now we have a few messages here, but now we have a slightly different prompt. It says IDL caret in the front. So now you know you're working in the IDL environment. And to check whether we did this right, the command to start our reduction package is called X specs tool. So if I type that, a whole bunch of stuff happens. There's a little error here because it can't find this file, and that's totally fine. But it managed to bring up the window and we're going to get more familiar with this window as we start to do the reductions. 
All right, but at least this tells me that everything worked out just great. All right, now one thing is every time, uh, so whenever you're done with this, you can always type, click on quit. And when you're done with IDL, because we actually, IDL is a, a, a kind of a, 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 a language that actually costs money to use. It's not like Python or basic where you can just download it for free. So we have a limited number of licenses that we need, uh, that we have available for using it. So just as kind of a housekeeping thing, make sure that when you're done with your reductions for the day or for the hour, just type exit at the IDL window so we can free up the license for that, that language. Okay, so if everything there worked just as I just saw, you're up and running and ready to do the reductions. Now, one more thing we're going to test uh, set up is also our Python uh, package. Now, Python is already installed on this computer. You can access it by typing Python. And again, you get a different uh, sort of uh, starting point here, a couple of carrots here. Um, and uh, this is where you can start to put in all your different Python commands. And we'll have a separate sort of training for the Python uh, in a little bit. Now, the package we're going to use is called SPLAT. It's something that we've developed here at UCSD for doing spectral analysis. And normally, when we input a package into Python, we type import SPLAT. Now, if we type this, what happens is nothing's found. And the reason is, is that we need to actually get this installed into our system. Now, because we're going to be doing regularly updates to the SPLAT code, in fact, a lot of your work this summer is going to help us improve the SPLAT code as you do the analysis, um, we have to actually install that code. So I'm going to exit out of here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this Python folder that I created. So I'm going to do CD Python, change directory to Python folder. Nothing in it right now. And I'm going to download the git code or the, the, Python, the Splat code into this folder. And we do this using a command called git, G-I-T. Uh, and in fact, what git actually points to is a, um, a repository of um, all kinds of different packages. And it's one that's kind of kept up to date and allows us to kind of interactively get the new code up there and also to extract it down when we update things. So this is the web page that hosts the Splat tool or Specs Prism Spectral Analysis Toolkit. Um, and again, we'll be updating this over time, but we can very easily grab this code and install it on our machine by just doing the following command in our terminal window in this uh, Python folder. So I'm going to type git clone. So it's going to get copy. I'm going to put the URL of that GitHub site. I actually throw s there. GitHub.com slash a burgasser slash splat dot get. And I'm going to press return here. And now we're going to wait because it takes a little time to get the splat code installed. There's a lot of files that are associated with it, mostly data that we use for spectral analysis. Um, and so it takes a little while for this to come on down. Uh, so uh, I think at this point, we'll take a little break in the video and we'll come right back when it's done. La, da, 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 da. Or maybe I'll just keep humming along as we wait for a download. There's all kinds of things you can do by download. You can sing a little karaoke. You can read a little bit of the news. Um, fortunately, it keeps track of how far we're going. It's about 48% done. Do, do, do. This is a really exciting part of the video. I know you've been waiting for this the entire time. Almost there. Almost there. Actually, we're not. We got lots of time to go. And yes, there's really 40,000 files associated with this code. This is a big code. We've had students working on this for many years. Um, we'll have some resources available for you to look up more information about it. Getting there, getting there. This is where you want to play this at kind of like five times speed because I'm not really going to entertain that well for downloading data. But that's okay. 74%, that's pretty high. Pretty soon it's going to shoot right up. Trust me. There we go. Oh, we're almost there. Oh, right. Oh, we still got one more step. Just gonna just check out all these files. Again, 
many, 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 many files that it's got to look at. It's almost there. So download about 1.4 gigabytes of information to get this flat running. There's a lot of data associated with this. And we're back. All right, so it finished its download. Here we are back at our prompt. And again, we can check to make sure everything got read in because if they open up this Python folder, we see now there's a new Splat folder and that has all kinds of stuff in it. All the stuff that we waited patiently to download, that's all associated with our package, all right? Now, what we can do is we can check to see if this worked. By now, uh, always, I always type bash just in case and I'll type in Python. And now when I type in import Splat, it won't complain. It'll actually think for a little while. We'll get a few messages because what it's doing is going through and adding in all the spectral data that we want. And now we're ready to, to go. And so I can test this, for example, by um, one of the things that we'll be doing is getting spectra from the library. And uh, the command for that is splat.get spectrum. And I don't have a particular spectrum in mind, so I'm just going to do lucky equals true. Get me a lucky spectrum. This is going to produce a list of spectrum objects. That's what those brackets look at. And I can make sure that things work by plotting that spectrum object. And it's going to bring up a nice window here that I can zoom in and play around with. All right, there's our first brown dwarf spectra. All right, and it's a beautiful T dwarf. That's great. All right, so that's all fine. And we can close out of that. Um, and again, it's good practice to exit out of Python, even though it's, it's no, no issues with licenses there. Um, and that's it. So the two main packages that you'll be using, IDL and Specstool and Python and Splat are now ready to go. And you're ready to dive into your research project. So looking forward to the next step where we're gonna look at how to actually start to reduce some of these data using specs tool uh, and look forward to the next section. See you then.